at exactly 4.17 in the morning. Sicily time. GPS monitoring stations around Mount Etna registered the impossible. Flank movement accelerating from 4 cm per month to 8 cm per hour. A 1,440-fold increase in velocity over a six-hour period. Dr. Giuseppe Puglisi from Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology was analysing overnight displacement data when his monitoring network began displaying acceleration curves that violate fundamental volcanic deformation physics. Puglisi told emergency teams that gradual flank creep shows linear velocity, predictable, measurable, stable. He said what they are detecting is exponential acceleration velocity doubling every 12 hours. That is not volcanic creep, that is structural failure in progress. But exponential acceleration requires the exponential force. Standard magma intrusion generates constant pressure, producing linear creep rates. Unless something beneath Etna is increasing pressure systematically, it could create a feedback loop where each millimetre of movement creates conditions for faster movement. GPS network analysis reveals the acceleration mechanism is not random, it is systematic. 17 of 24 monitoring stations went offline in a north to south sequence as flank detachment progressed. Station losses occurred at mathematical intervals suggesting coordinated structural failure rather than random equipment malfunction. Submarine acoustic monitoring in the Ionian Sea the sea detected what GPS data predicted. Seafloor deformation is consistent with massive debris accumulation. Three cubic kilometers of volcanic material, the entire southeastern flank is moving toward the marine environment at accelerating rates that tsunami models describe as a pre-collapse velocity threshold. Mediterranean tsunami modeling shows a catastrophic timeline. If three cubic kilometers enter the sea simultaneously, Wave generation can occur in under 90 seconds. A 30 meter tsunami could strike Catania, Syracuse and Messina within eight minutes. Regional devastation is affecting five Mediterranean countries before warning systems can complete alert distribution. Italian emergency protocols have shifted from monitoring to active preparation. Evacuation routes along the coast have been cleared International Maritime Coordination is positioning naval vessels for rapid extraction. Cross-border agreements with Greece, Malta and Libya provide refugee accommodation, signalling that authorities are anticipating collapse rather than preventing it. So, what mechanism? What creates exponential, acceler exponential acceleration in geological systems? What triggers the volcanic feedback loop? to shift from stable creep to catastrophic acceleration? And why are Mediterranean nations preparing evacuation infrastructure while maintaining the public narrative that Etna's flank movement is scientifically understood and under control? Key questions. Over 40 years, volcanologists have documented Mount Etna's southeastern flank slowly sliding toward the Ionian Sea at a steady, predictable rate of four centimeters per month. A geological creep so gradual that coastal communities built entire cities within potential impact zones, assured by scientific authorities that any significant change would take decades to manifest, providing ample warning time. Slow creep. Mount Etna, Europe's most active volcano, rises 3,329 metres from Sicily's eastern coast. But this mountain continues another 2,400 metres below sea level with 40% of its unstable mass hidden underwater. The volcano sits precariously at the convergence of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, building its massive structure over a foundation of weak clay sediments that act as a natural sliding plane. This geological reality creates the conditions for catastrophic collapse. The volcano's eastern flank lacks proper support, with nothing but open ocean to provide a buttress. Essentially, Etna has been building itself on the geological illogical equivalent of quicksand, with gravity constantly pulling its massive weight toward the Mediterranean. Catastrophic risk. Dr. Marco Neri, senior researcher at the Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, with 25 years studying Etna's instabilities, 
explains that the entire eastern flank, approximately three the cubic kilometers of volcanic material, is effectively detached from the main edifice. It has been moving as a semi-coherent block, sliding along clay layers four to six kilometers below the surface. What has been preventing catastrophic failure is friction. Historical evidence reveals Etna's flanks have collapsed before. Marine sediment cores from the Ionian Sea contain volcanic debris. Layers dating back 8,000 years, when a PRE historic flank collapse triggered a massive tsunami that devastated Mediterranean coastal settlements. Archaeological evidence across Greece, Malta and Libya shows ancient tsunami deposits at precisely the elevations predicted by modern simulation models. The GPS monitoring network surrounding Mount Etna represents one of the most sophisticated volcano surveillance systems on Earth. 24 high precision stations transmit real-time displacement data to centimeter accuracy. For four decades, these instruments have recorded the same predictable pattern steady creep at four centimeters per month with minor fluctuations during eruption cycles that quickly returned to baseline rates. This predictability allowed INGV to establish long-term risk assessments based on linear movement models. Coastal communities were informed that significant changes to flank stability would develop over years or decades, allowing ample time for evacuation planning. Public infrastructure, including highways, hospitals, and Sicily's second largest city, Catania, with 311,000 residents, was constructed within eight to 15 kilometers of the coastline, directly in potential tsunami inundation zones. Dr. Giuseppe Pulisi oversees Etna's deformation monitoring network at INGV's Catania Observatory. His team was conducting routine overnight data assessment when anomalous readings appeared on June 2nd at 4.17 a.m. Puglisi reported during emergency briefings that at first they assumed equipment malfunctioned. He said their baseline is four centimeters per month of displacement. Suddenly, they were seeing four centimeters in a single hour. The acceleration curve violated every parameter of their monitoring protocols. Verification across multiple stations confirmed what seemed physically impossible. Etna's southeastern flank had accelerated suddenly. The southeastern flank had accelerated from linear creep to exponential movement, velocity increasing 1,440 times within a six hour period. More alarming, the acceleration continued doubling approximately every 12 hours, following a mathematical progression consistent with catastrophic structural failure. Dr. Maria Corsaro, a physical volcanologist specializing in Etna's deformation mechanics, explained that this is not normal volcanic behavior. Typical flank movement follows linear progression, steady, measurable, predictable. What we are seeing is systematic acceleration, indicating potential activation of the volcanic feedback loop. Within 72 hours of detecting the initial acceleration, 17 of 24 GPS. Monitoring stations failed sequentially, not due to equipment malfunction, but because ground deformation exceeded their calibration range. The pattern of station failures revealed another alarming trend. Progressive failure following a north to south sequence, suggesting coordinated detachment rather than random deformation. While terrestrial monitoring systems were progressively failing, Submarine acoustic sensors deployed off Sicily's coast detected matching acceleration of the seafloor, confirming the entire flank system, both above and below water, was moving as a unified mass. Seafloor deformation revealed massive debris bulge formation, three cubic kilometers of volcanic material displacing the seabed at the base of Etna's submarine slope. When INGV scientists plotted acceleration curves against structural failure thresholds, made the projection alarming. At current doubling rates, the flank would reach terminal velocity, the point of complete detachment, within 18 to 30 hours. If Etna's three cubic kilometers of flank enters the Ionian Sea at collapse velocity, Mediterranean nations face a tsunami disaster unprecedented in modern European history. 
Wave propagation models show devastating impact timelines that expose the region's fundamental vulnerability. Tsunami waves would strike coastal populations before warning systems could complete alert distribution. Dr. Stefano Gresta, Mediterranean tsunami specialist, explains the critical weakness. Current warning infrastructure was designed for seismic tsunamis, where earthquake detection provides 30 to 60 minute warning windows. Volcanic flank collapse generates waves reaching Sicily within eight minutes faster than our alert distribution capability. For the closest coastal zones, warning systems are operationally useless. INGV tsunami models project a catastrophic sequence if Etna's flank collapses. At collapse initiation, three cubic kilometers of volcanic material, weighing approximately 7.8 billion tons, would enter the Ionian Sea at velocities exceeding 150 kilometers per hour. The massive displacement would generate 30 meter tsunami waves within 90 seconds of impact. These waves would strike Sicily's eastern coast, including Catania, population 311,000, Syracuse, population 122,000, and Messina, population 237,000, within eight minutes of collapse. Current tsunami alert systems require a minimum 15 to 20 minutes to distribute warnings, meaning waves would hit populations before any official notification could arrive. Secondary waves would reach Malta, with a population of 493,000 within 25 minutes, bringing 15 meter tsunami heights. Malta's island-wide alert system requires 45 minutes for comprehensive distribution. The entire nation would face inundation with insufficient warning time. Greece's Peloponnese coast, the Ionian Islands and Crete would experience 10 meter waves within 45 minutes, providing a minimal evacuation window for 670,000 coastal residents. Libya and Tunisia would face 5 to 8 meter waves within 60 to 75 minutes along 1,000 to 200 kilometers of coastline. Total Mediterranean impact, five nations, 2,400 kilometers of coastline, 2.1 million people in direct tsunami zones, many receiving warnings after waves arrive. The exponential acceleration detected on June 2nd is not random volcanic behavior. It is the activation of what volcanologists call the volcanic feedback loop. This self-amplifying cycle transforms gradual creep into catastrophic collapse through a four-stage progression that, once initiated, has no natural stopping mechanism. Dr. Maria Cossaro explains the physics behind the acceleration. In normal conditions, magma pressure produces a constant force against the flank, resulting in steady movement. But once a critical threshold is crossed, each millimetre of displacement creates conditions for ignitions for faster displacement, producing exponential acceleration that continues until complete structural failure. Recent GPS horse had been out. Recent GPS data. Scientists confirm a systematic doubling pattern. May 1st through May 31st, total movement 4.1 centimetres, a stable monthly rate. June 1st, midnight to noon. 2.3 centimeters movement, accelerating. June 1st, noon to midnight, 4.8 centimeters movement, doubling. June 2nd, midnight to six in the morning, 4.2 centimeters movement. This six hour movement equals the previous month total. June 2nd, six in the morning to noon, 8.1 centimeters movement, exponential acceleration confirmed. Projection for June 2nd, noon to six in the evening, 16 centimeters movement, doubling continues. This pattern produces a mathematical failure projection. Doubling time, 12 hours. Current velocity, eight centimeters per hour. Projected velocity in 24 hours, 32 centimeters per hour. Projected velocity in 48 hours, 128 centimeters per hour. Structural failure threshold, 50 to 60 centimeters per hour timeline to failure, 18 to 30 hours from current measurements. Dr. Giuseppe Pulisi explains that once the feedback loop activates, intervention becomes impossible. No engineering solution exists to halt three cubic kilometers of volcanic material in exponential acceleration. The only effective response is population protection through preemptive evacuation. This reality explains the classified nature of the emergency response.
An emergency directive was issued eight hours after acceleration detection. All Aetna. Flank acceleration data requires immediate public communication restriction. Authorities understood that exponential progression meant coastal populations had hours, not decades, before potential catastrophic impact, with no effective warning system possible. While INGV publicly maintains that Aetna's flank movement is being carefully monitored, classified emergency protocols tell a different story. Mediterranean authorities are implementing evacuation infrastructure on a scale typically reserved for anticipated major disasters while telling coastal populations they face no imminent threat. Italian Protezione Seville activated maximum emergency level. Rosso on June 15th, reserved for imminent major disasters. Public communications described only enhanced volcanic monitoring. Satellite imagery confirms systematic clearing of the Catania waterfront under the guise of coastal infrastructure modernization creating an eight kilometer buffer zone in the precise area that tsunami models show would experience maximum wave impact. Anonymous local officials confirmed coastal evacuation protocols are evacuation percent complete, with 203,000 of 303,000 residents in immediate impact zones relocated under various infrastructure justifications. Military restricted areas now control access to previously public coastal zones, with naval coordination visible despite official denials of emergency status. Mount Etna's southeastern flank is moving at 128 centimeters per hour and is doubling every 12 hours. 17 of 24 GPS monitoring stations have failed as ground deformation exceeds measurement capabilities. Submarine sensors detect massive seafloor debris accumulation, indicating flank detachment in progress. Mediterranean authorities have evacuated 303,000 Sicilian coastal residents under infrastructure improvement justifications. NATO has positioned 23 naval vessels for the rapid maritime extraction. Five nations are coordinating refugee accommodation for 2.8 million people. All of this is for volcanic activity they publicly describe as routine monitoring. Mathematical models indicate 18 to 30 hours until a potential structural failure threshold. Tsunami models predict 30 meter waves striking Sicily in eight minutes after collapse before warning systems can complete alert distribution. 2.17 million Mediterranean coastal residents live in impact zones with zero effective warning capability. The flank is accelerating, the countdown is active, the Mediterranean is unprepared, and 2.17 million people continue living on coastlines that classified models suggest could face 30 meter tsunami waves with minutes of warning or none at all. If you found this earth attacks investigation revealing, Help us continue exposing hidden geological threats by subscribing now and hitting the notification bell. We are monitoring Etna's acceleration in real time and will bring you emergency updates as the situation develops. Share this video to alert others about what Mediterranean authorities are not disclosing about catastrophic flank collapse potential.